Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm Jody Collier, and I'm here with... Andrew Carden. Andrew's a good friend of mine. His company, Nuco, has let him come here to help me work on some videos to help people pass the downhill 6010 API 1104 welding test. So before we get into pipe, we're going to do plate tests first. Got little mock-ups of, of vertical downhill, overhead, and flat, and then we'll get into pipe. Today's plate, really good practice. Let's do it. Let's hit it. Before we get into the welding, I do want to thank Triangle Engineering at TriEng.com for providing the test plates that we're going to use in this video, as well as this test stand. These are 30 degree beveled plates, and we're putting around a 1 16th land on there, a little heavy 1 16th. That's a, that's a 332 rod there for reference, so a little bit less than 332, maybe a little bit more than 1 16th. Same on the gap. 80 amps to start with here with a 1 8th rod. We'll do 532 root. A little bit later on in different videos. This is an ESOP Rebel 285. Here we go. All right, Andrew is wearing a, a pancake hood. That's what he wears on the job. Why you wear the pancake hood, Andrew? The pancake hood is excellent for welding in outdoor environments, so it blocks out all the backlight when you're trying to look at that uh, route going in. So what you saw just there was a little cold, so we bumped it up. 10 amps to 90 and so now you see a little bit more light coming through the backside really nice like it should you can go a lot of times you, sound is important here too and for some reason I was having some serious sound issues with the camera so not all the sound came through on this video hopefully we can make it work and, and use sound from other clips and things like that All right, that's the root pass, not ground yet. We will grind it before putting in the hot pass, but before we get to the hot pass, let's talk about some of the key points in putting in a downhill root with 6010. So I'm gonna let Andrew talk about these important bullet points here real quick. So the first thing you guys wanna consider is your fit up, making sure your fit up's nice and square, high, low, and not just your land and your gap, but everything that goes along with that. And that leads me into my second point, which is amperage, making sure that keyhole is not dragging too far behind you and making sure it's not, you know, snuffed right up to the rod. And all different machines are going to have a different voltage ratio to the amperage. So you want to be aware of that depending on what machine you have. Rod angle in this video, you saw I had quite a bit of a drag angle, but depending on the position I'm in, it, that would change as well as, you know, slight hiccups in the fit up. And then pressure on the rod is also going to tie everything together and just making sure that your rod is dragging on the sidewalls. It's not always necessary to grind a root pass this smooth, but Andrew's company's procedure does require the root pass to be ground. Since we're going to 532 next, you do have to be careful how much you grind or you could punch all the way through and that's no good. So we're going to 532 7010 HYP Plus, also known as Hippie Rod. The HYP stands for High Yield Pipe. So here we go with the hot pass. 532 7010. Bump the amperage up to about 135 for this larger rod. I'm going to let Andrew explain a little bit about his technique here for the hot pass. So if you notice, I get a nice tight whipping motion. You want to be in and out on that hot pass. You don't want to hang around too long. And what you definitely don't want to do is pull the rod out too far, which will increase your voltage and potentially blow through your root. So you can notice the rod angle going here. Notice him stitching back and forth. Every time he stitches, is creating a ripple. That's why you see those distinct ripples in, uh, in 6010 and 7010. That's the hot pass all wire wheeled down. And now we're ready to come back with the first fill pass after the hot pass. Amperage is about the same for this pass. Could go up maybe five amps, but could go either way. Just depends on what machine you're running. Notice the rod angle. Now we're gonna talk about a little bit different technique. Now I'm starting to employ more of a circle technique and you'll see my counterclockwise go to a clockwise technique. Really, it doesn't matter as long as you're comfortable with what the puddle is doing. Notice my rod angle as well. Coming down the side of a plate or down the side of a pipe, you almost want to use that arc force to hold that puddle up a little bit. That's why I have more of a drag angle 
and you that right there you just saw a little bobble going the opposite direction or maybe a horseshoe technique all of those little techniques help in giving you that nice even ripple all the way down all right that one's done now we're keeping this amperage about 135 here that could change on a big piece of pipe where you got a lot more heat sink and everything this is a seven inch long piece of plate gets saturated with heat so the amperage could vary by by as much as 10 amps or so but it also could vary depending on what machine you're doing but what are you doing here andrew so with this fill pass i try to get this as flush as possible when the puddle starts you start carrying a larger puddle especially down the side of a plate that's hot or a, a side of a pipe your puddle is going to start acting a little different so you're going to have to employ several different techniques in order to get the flux out of your way and to keep the puddle up in its place it sometimes wants to chase after that rod and snuff you out well that puts us in a, in a really good spot for a cover pass there now now the cover pass explain the limitations on the cover pass andrew that you deal with on on a pipe for visual inspection criteria so 1 16th max height is the what the customer specifies is what they want for cap reinforcement another thing is they want at least the 16th on either side of the bevel taken away so you end up on 375 wall with about a half inch wide uh, cap pass notice here i actually turned my amperage down to about 130 i'm carrying a much larger puddle and there really isn't much room for it to go uh, depth wise so you're moving pretty quickly notice on the right side just a little bit of a bump as I come around because if I just do that straight side to side I end up with a deposit of metal on one side or another so I try to bump the puddle up on one side just to add a little bit more weld metal and it'll make it nice and flat all right that's done there's the root pass now a, a little side note you got to have complete penetration oftentimes if it's not poked through there a lot the hot pass and subsequent passes will really push it through and it'll be pushed through by the end. There's the cover pass, again, with that 1 16th height requirement. That's a 1 16th rod next to it, right close. Well, I hope you got something out of this week's video. I'd like to take the next two minutes or so and just give you a little preview of my latest four disc DVD set. I know a lot of people have gotten away from DVDs and, and just watch Netflix and stuff, but a lot of people are still using DVD players in their shop where they don't have a good Wi-Fi signal. So I just want to show you how crisp the arc shots are here. This is a video of the screen in my living room. And, you know, a lot of people just enjoy the fact that they can rewind and pause and even enlarge, magnify, and things like that with a lot of TVs and DVD players. And you can just watch something over and over again. It's a good training tool. Sometimes it can be even better than looking over the shoulder of another weld or an instructor because you get tired of asking somebody or they get tired of you asking to do it over and over again. On a DVD or a video, you can play it, replay it, replay it. You can do the weld, you can watch it, you can do the weld, you can watch it. And it's just, it's just a better way to learn than trying all on your own. So there's a lot of tips in here. Flash tacking like you do on thin stainless steel. Uh, all, lots of arc shots, lots of techniques, lots of different metals and different processes. It's a year's worth of video on four discs. Here you see a little stainless steel lap joint. There are lots of videos on stainless steel out there. Not too many on titanium, though. This is one is uh, Mike Zancanato building a titanium bicycle frame. Along with having a detailed table of contents on the jacket, the menus are very easy to navigate to find each topic. And there are a lot of basic topics in here that for any student going through welding school, I think this will be very helpful for. There are also some videos in here where I do tests, cut and etch type tests to, to verify penetration. Here's a really good feature of watching a DVD. You see something that you want to watch over again, maybe even magnify. I can pull it up and magnify it times 2x and replay and maybe, maybe take a real close look at something like a restart. If you're having trouble with restarts, for instance, you can even slow it down. See how crisp that is? And again, this is a video of a video. Nothing like watching a crisp, detailed arc shot along with good instructions. There are also some projects, and one really fun one was the Thor hammer that I built, a Thor dead blow hammer. I tried to incorporate welding as well as TIG brazing, as well as pulse settings to just get as, as much instruction out of this process as I could. And then when I was finished, I had a really beautiful hammer. 
Here you see me TIG brazing the bung in with silicon bronze, and then I added BB shot for weight and for the dead blow aspect. It's a really fun project. So if you're interested in this DVD, just you can learn more at weldmonger.com. I appreciate you watching. See you next time.